Hi there. And uh, so I just finished recording episode number 261 with a gentleman named Sebastian Boulanger, I believe is the correct pronunciation. I've probably now butchered it three times. Uh, Super interesting. I had no idea what I was walking into with this one. All I knew was he had this cool audio technology, or at least he thought it was cool, and that he had a a very interesting and unique background in uh, creating electronic products for some pretty cool companies, including Cirque and and others. But honestly, uh, I think this became a really interesting discussion on this Devox technology, and you should listen to it if you do anything with corporate events uh, or any kind of convention business or anything really cool product. So hope you like it. Take a listen. Episode number 261. Thanks for joining today on Geese of Gear, episode number 261. Today's podcast is brought to you by Row Visual. As Row Visual's carbon series has long-term success, the Carbon Mark II is a lightweight choice with a more robust structure. It's not just light, it's revolutionary, weighing 17 kilograms per square meter and measuring 600 by 1200 millimeters. It's 12% lighter than Rose CB series, yet boasts a stronger structure. Perfect for touring and festivals, the CB Mark II's reduced weight means lower transportation and labor costs. Its compatibility with T4 and airframe systems ensures seamless integration. The panel's ability to curve both convexly and concavely opens up new creative possibilities for outdoor applications as well. When it comes to performance, the CB Mark II stands out. Even at high brightness, its improved dissipation keeps it stable outdoors. The CB5 Mark II's brightness is up to 6,000 nits and its 7680 hertz Refresh rate and 16-bit grayscale guarantee your show the best LED viewing performance. The Carbon Mark II series by Row Visual has set a new benchmark with Solotech's record-breaking purchase of 4,500 square meters of LED tiles. This acquisition signifies the largest single batch of LED tiles, underscores the CB Mark II's potential to be a standard performer for outdoor events. For more information on CB Mark II and other LED solutions, visit rovisual.com. And this episode is also brought to you by AVL Media Group. AVL Media Group is your premier North American distribution partner. They're committed to developing a long-term, mutually beneficial business relationship with their dealers throughout through professional products at competitive prices backed by excellent sales, service, and technical support. AVL Media Group concentrates on project-based installation, servicing the design and contractor markets. With their unique approach and innovative products, AVL Media Group is the main go-to company for audio, video, and lighting in Canada. As the exclusive U.S. distributor for Midas Lab Group and And now shipping Lake LMX processors, Tannoy Clark Technique, TurboSound, Aston Wharfdale Pro, and now adding BZB gear products to their lineup. They're committed to delivering excellence to their partners at every level by providing outstanding pre- and post-sales service and support. Visit avlmediagroup.com today. And last but not least, I want to make sure to mention my favorite coffee. And so I know that people think that I might be making this up. I drink this coffee every single day. I drink three cups a day pretty much almost every day of my life. And um, it's an amazing blend. I was drinking it. I was blending it myself prior to uh, Coffee Cult creating this custom blend for us. And it's amazing. And so funny story, I got up to Canada. Within a few weeks, I ran out of uh, my Geezer's Grind coffee And I called Jamie and his staff at Coffee Cult and I said, guys, I know you don't ship into Canada right now, but I need a favor. And within a few days, four bags of Geezer's Grind showed up at my door and I'm back in business. So I dare you to try it out. I think you'll like it. If you go to their website, coffeecult.com, I believe if you buy two bags, shipping is free. And um, these are the best beans I've found. They're amazing. Up here in Canada, 
like I said, I ran out. I went to Costco. I bought some beans, hated them. Uh, they were too oily and just didn't work re- really well in my, I've got an automatic machine, didn't work well. So, um, you know, I tried a few different, oh, this is the greatest organic bean you'll find. I just didn't like them, you know. And so that's when I called Jamie and had him ship some up to Canada. So check it out, please. And by the way, I forgot to mention, not only is it a, a great coffee and worth every dime you're paying for it, but all the proceeds go to Roby Backstage, which helps fallen comrades in our industry. So support Coffee Cult, support Geezer's Grind, and you're supporting our industry. And thank you so much. <laughs> Hello, and welcome back to episode number 261. Uh, I don't really have anything prepared to talk about today. It's been a crazy 24 hours since I recorded our last podcast with Lori Rubenstein. I hope that you've checked that one out already. Uh, It was a great discussion, and she does some really, really great things. She's a wonderful lady who's been in the industry a long time, and I've always said it takes a special person to serve on these boards and to be uh, to head up any kind of a nonprofit organization. And uh, certainly she is that special person. She loves doing the work that she does. And like she said on the podcast yesterday, her husband, John McGraw, who was a co-founder of Production Arts and is retired, takes care of their entire world so that she can do the work that she does in these nonprofit organizations benefiting our industry. So Please take a listen. Episode number 260. That was Lori Rubenstein, who is the, I believe her title is executive director of uh, Behind the Scenes. And so today we have a gentleman that I've been looking forward to because he's a technology guy. I'm a technology guy. I'm a geek. I like, uh, uh, as you know, AI, of course. So I'm going to try and get this gentleman talking about some AI as well. But uh, Sebastian, uh uh-oh. I've got a French name here that I'm French. I'm supposed to know how to say this. So I'm just going to say Sebastian Boulanger, which I'm sure is Boulanger or something, is a 15-year veteran of the live events industry, having worked as a technical director for the likes of the Quebec Minister of Justice and Cirque du Soleil. Then starting his own events company, IC Events, and finally founding Devox, which is a new tech business that brings fan experience to another level. And we're going to talk a whole bunch about that today. So please join me and welcome Mr. Sebastian Boulanger to today's podcast. Hello, Sebastian. How are you today? Good, thanks. Hello, Marcel. Great to see you. And uh, yeah, we were just talking. I, I appreciate how quickly and easily you came into the podcast because sometimes uh, some of our guests struggle a little bit with the technology. <laughs> you know, there's some well, very specific things. It's got to be Chrome. It's got to be a Chrome browser or an Edge browser, which nobody uses Edge, I don't think. Well, I, I think some say. people do. Some uh, people Chrome, do, maybe. Yeah. Chrome was quite easy, so no problem. Thanks. Yeah, yeah. No, and your sound is good and your video is good, so we're ready to have a great conversation. So I appreciate you coming in and doing this. And um, thanks for inviting me. Really excited. You know, I'm I'm a geeky technology guy. I I would like to be more, I guess, uh, informed than I am. So I'm not an engineer. I'm not a very technical person, but I understand technology really well, and I like to talk about it. So uh, it's Perfect. always nice to have someone who can talk tech. And when I'm talking about tech, it's not lighting tech or or necessarily concert you know gear tech it's something a little different that we're going to get into today so uh, kind I, can, of I can meet you in the middle right there if it's too technical let me know but i think i can meet in the middle yeah yeah i think we'll be fine i'll i'll keep yeah. you dumbed down don't worry perfect <laughs> i'll Love make it. you talk at my <laughs> level which no. is like fifth grade you know you might be surprised too but okay <laughs> fine <laughs> so um you know I like to really get into, before we, we talk about the stuff we really want to talk about, I want to know a little bit about your background and, yes. uh, 
you know, you have a very unique uh, group of, of companies that you've worked for. And I yes. said it in the intro, and I'll say it again, uh, you know, the Minister of Justice for, in Quebec, and, mm-hmm. and then shortly after you were working for Cirque du Soleil. So it's a, it's a very uh, wide range of, of uh, companies that you've worked with. Absolutely, yeah. So how did you get started? Like, was it by accident, or did you actually go and train and go to school to become a technical director? Well, a little bit of both, actually. So my first job as a teenager, around 16 years old, when I was in a, in a little suburb town next to Montreal, uh, it was a summer job, and I was working as a stage technician for a little city, a town, um, called Repentigny, a super small town. Yep. But anyway, I was doing, like, a kids' festival and, uh, you know, summer theater and stuff like that. Yeah. And I just realized that it was fun just to be part of the show even as a tech you know it's like you're having a backside view back you know backstage view you're operating you're yeah. live. and you're like wow that's 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 pretty cool I'm, I'm having fun with my first job that's great yeah and um you know i kept this job for several years and it turns out to be a perfect match with my scholarity and i was uh, in in electronic engineering as a technician so that's a okay. program here called technology of electronic engineering Okay. So basically, this program is made to to uh, to basically form technicians that are going to be working with engineer. Ah, I see. Oh, sort of, if I can put it that way. Yeah. So anyway, I was I was doing my electronic engineering technically. I mean, um, it's not a university level. That's kind of a professional school, if you want to put it that way. Yeah, but when you were going to school, you weren't thinking I'm going to take this technology engineering course so that I can go be in the live events business? Oh, not at all. I just no. thought that this live event was a kind of a a jump for me to understand a little easier than most in the program that I was studying, right? Yeah, yeah. So I just used this parallel domain just to move forward. Yeah. And turns out, obviously enough, that when I got graduate, when I graduate, yeah. I and my you know, my scholarity was over, uh, I jump in as a first job directly into show business. And huh. then done, I was hooked. Basically. Yeah, of course. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's obviously something that's quite magnetic, and it pulls you in. And I mean, for yeah. me, you know, I thought, okay, I'm going to stop here for a few years. And it ended up being so far, maybe 35 years for me. So yeah, yeah. And timing wise, I was super lucky as well. Because if you recall, I'm going to bring you back to uh, 2004, or something like that. Yeah first generation of Grand MA lighting console, first introduction of the first network environment for show business industry. You know, it was the kind of early days of everything which is modern and assumed now. Yeah. But back then, there was a lot of dimmer racks and a lot of ra- the lamps and stuff like that. True. So I was just out of school and I knew all these shits already. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I don't yeah. know if I can say that. Right? Of course you can. Okay, sorry. Yeah. So I was kind of the the new nerd in town, if I can put it yeah, that way. You know? yeah. So I was training and helping a lot of people. And by doing so, I was learning myself a lot about how it was done before, just how it, how it is done right now and where are we heading. So I was a little bit ahead of the curve, but just because of my scholarity, basically. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I, I was kind of at the right timing here. But it's an, it's an interesting point because I remember, because I'm a little older than you, uh, I remember when we went from like very manual desks, uh, mm-hmm. you know, AVO desks and analog desks yep. to HOG2 exactly. uh, in the 90s. And when that happened, you saw a whole new generation of these lighting programmers who started Absolutely. to enter the business. And in the past, they had either been like nightclub VJs or DJs or light jockeys in nightclubs or whatever, and or they were just you know uh, you know EDM musicians or whatever they were, but they were technology people more than they were lighting people in many cases. Well, and, the console and turns it, out to be computers, of course. But it created this whole new generation and this whole new group of people. And it also brought up how much they were able to be paid because now instead of, you know, a regular lighting programmer who was just programming cues on a very simple uh, analog console, now they were actually really getting into coding on a, on a hog too. 
And suddenly these guys were getting, you know, between 250 and $500 a day, which today doesn't sound like a lot of money. But back then mm -hmm. it was like, whoa, you know, I can make that much just programming this little digital console. Mm -hmm. And so then it took a jump even further, like you said, when it got into networking and stuff through the uh, MA and other consoles. So, exactly. yeah, very, very, uh, it's an interesting point because I think if you look at the lighting programmer and operator today, compared to 30, 40 years ago, very, very different looking person from a skill set and, and a knowledge and, set. Yeah, and we've seen the day of the new effect generator for lighting fixtures and stuff like that. So yes. We, before, there was no need. There was not that much moving lights. Now you're looking to, a, I don't know, a TV show like a, a Got Talent or whatever. And can you, can you count how many moving lights there is? So, yeah. uh, you know, now you can select them all and fit an effect engine and there you go. So this yeah. is kind of an evolution. Well, where, we had, yeah. uh, we had Ola Melzig on, on the, yeah. uh, on the podcast and, you know, he's the technical director for, uh, the song contest okay. in, in Europe and Eurovision and, uh, I can't remember exactly how many consoles he had, but it was the largest number of MA consoles ever networked together. Okay. <laughs> and the number of operators and, and how technical that got from just a networking standpoint is exactly. unbelievable. So it, you're right. I mean, yeah. it's crazy the level we're taking this stuff to now. Yeah, so I turned out to be a little lucky on the timing here when I came into the industry. Yeah. So that's, yeah. that's basically where yeah, that's perfect. I, I entered the domain. Basically. Yeah. And so, you know, as far as your resume, anyways, your your first job was uh, as a an assistant technical director uh, yeah. in what appears to be uh, an equipment company, not a not a show. Yeah, exactly. I was working as a bench technician, as a te uh, technical director assistant. I was also helping for tours. So whenever somebody was having a problem elsewhere on the planet on a tour, they were calling me over to try to tr troubleshoot remotely and stuff like oh, that. Oh, okay. So there was no TeamViewer or Google Chrome remote desktop back then, yeah. obviously. So it was yeah. like on the call, on the phone. Yeah, um, trying to figure so, out what was broken. Well, yeah, it was kind of a really cool moment of my life. Those kind of uh, four years, I'll say, just up to tw uh, 2008, yeah. uh, most likely. I was kind of a, let me let me say like a, a super tech without pretending nothing at all just because yeah. i was having this scholarity and skills to yeah. the knowledge that that's that's all i'm saying so i was like having a lot of friends that were calling me a lot from everywhere on the planet i do have this fixture this problem can you help me out and yeah so well, i learned sense. really you, quickly you were a proper engineer you know there's not very many people who come into our business with that kind of training you know usually Back it's then, either that's true yeah, yeah, usually it's either theatrical training, if at best, you know, like a theatrical lighting yeah. degree or something, or mm -hmm. um, or it's just, you know, they were in a band and they ended up moving into lights and figuring it out on their own. Exactly. Is, is, that's, that's the most common experience. So someone coming in with an engineering degree of some sort is, mm -hmm. is a big deal. And uh, yeah, so it sounds like it worked out really well for you. So how'd you get this gig with the minister of justice yeah, and why okay, do they, so, and why do they need you? <laughs> well, the thing is from 2008 to 2011, I was on a worldwide tour with a dancing company as a technician, of course, oh, but I was okay. with a dancing company. So I was uh, younger and I was not having uh, ch children. Uh, I was renting an apartment and stuff like that. So yeah. I said, hey, okay, now is the right time to move and go on tour. Yeah. When I came back, it's like if I was a ghost in my own town, basically. Nobody has seen me for four years or something yeah. like that, you know? So I jumped from a gig to another gig to another gig. And I was like, always, always having to prove myself to this new team. Then switch to the next venue and prove yourself to the new team. Yeah. Now you're head of the crew for the lighting department and you have no authority because these guys are from a union, they know better than you are. And I was like, okay, I'm tired of always proving yeah. that I can do the job. First yeah. thing. Yeah. Second thing, I was having a lot of proud into the result. So basically I was working hard and I was perfectionist in my way of thinking. Yeah. So in the meantime, I was tired of loading out. The show was like perfect. Everybody was pleased. Okay, done. Take it out. Put it <laughs> down in the truck. Like, come on. You know, yeah. all yeah. this work to take it out. So yeah. I just had this kind of uh, brain fart basically when I said, 
okay, what do I, what can I do next? What, what would be the next step? And I said, hey, how about try to do it like for permanent installation? Because yeah. audiovisual industry for integration and audiovisual industry for show business, it's cardboard boxes versus word cases. Yeah. This is the same gear. Yeah. But you label all the cables nicely. You plan everything perfectly. When the truck load out, this is all cardboard boxes and stuff like that. But pretty much this is the same gear, same yeah. technology. Yeah. So I said, hey, I'm going to try. I was too busy with those gigs and show business stuff. I just said, hey, I'm going to try to, you know, jump into this Quebec province employment program and see what turns out, you know. So with my roadmap, my scholarity, and my, uh, I had to come an exam for uh, skills and stuff like that. And they just called me back like an hour after or something, you know, really, really quickly. I'll say a week after. And um, they just said, hey, I would like to try it. I said, sure, why not? We'll be different. So it turns out that I was designing um, AV automation for co uh, courthouses and courtroom. Ah, that was Jesus. really cool. Interesting. But, at the end of the day, they saw, this is microphones, yeah. television screen, racks to the, the wall, speaker boxes, yeah. a video conferencing system. So basically, it's all the same thing. Yeah. But I was working with... But it's for the government. <laughs> it is. But yeah. I was working with the architects, uh, electrical crew, cabling company, and stuff like that. And everything was going into a room that was uh, AC, AC conditioning, like a super yeah. climatized room, yeah. ventilation stuff. And I was like, wow, that's so clean. That's so neat. I yeah. can take my time. I can, you know, so I really like this part of my life. Yeah. Uh, but it was like a governmental job. So, you know, the salary was not super exciting. Even yeah, nobody aspires well. to work for the government necessarily. <laughs> not you know? really, but it gives me this kind of knowledge backpack that I was lacking. Yeah. I thought I knew. Yeah. But those challenges into the integration are totally different. Yeah. Same tech. Yeah. You know? I get it. Yeah. Yeah. So, so what, you know, let me ask you yeah. though, because I've always been curious. So on a job like that, like when you're putting out a, an RFQ or whatever it is, are they paying twice as much money because it's the government? Like, are they charged more money automatically because it's the government? Sometimes, yes. Yeah. Um, but it's obvious. Yeah. But we, we, in Quebec province, we have regulations where you need to have at least three quote, quotes. Yeah. So one of the three is always discarded right away, either yeah. too low, either too high, either, you know. Yeah, yeah. And then you choose. Yeah. So um, I'll say yes and no here. Yeah. I mean, not really. But yeah. the thing is, the government can specify super high end product. Yeah. Because they want to have reliability. Yeah. When you're having the judge that is seating right now, it's not the time for the DSP to... Not well, to job, right? you're right. But the other thing is, because I think there's private companies that have the same desire, the same want, mm -hmm. the government, it, you've got a bunch of bureaucrats who are spending someone else's money. <laughs> you know, they're well, spending taxpayer a, money, so they don't care. Well, as an example here, um, all those in Quebec <laughs> province, all of those court sessions are public. You can assist if you want to. Yeah. Um, and they have to be able to offer this court to only a physically attending person they are not allowed to share it onto the internet the cloud or whatever it is yeah right? if you want to assist just move and come in yeah but sometimes the translator or the i don't know maybe the the, the testimony is coming from a jail another courthouse is elsewhere another I country see. and stuff like yeah. that so they needed to have this cisco codec system yeah so this is something funny because you you have by law to use these guys because it's encrypted both ways. Yeah, I see. Yeah. So now, therefore, all the products you're using with this technology has to be matching. Whereas and now you can probably get the same thing out of like a free messenger, <laughs> you know, like uh, WhatsApp exactly. or something is, is encrypted both directions, for example. Well, these days they're allowed to use Teams. They were not back then. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, this is only the, uh, I don't know, what's the name of the, uh, I'm sorry to, to say it like that, but the it's lady okay. in front of the judge. The, um, the lady in front of the judge. The, just the, the kind of secretary of the court uh, while it's... it's oh, uh, yeah, the... the um, clerk. Yeah, the clerk. Clerk of the court. I think it's yeah. the clerk. Yeah. She was the one with the Chris Tron screen. 
Oh, really? So, yeah. So That's while, interesting. So while the court session is ongoing, she was handling the AV side of it for the recording. That's crazy. For the audio translation. And it has to be programmed in a way where it's simple enough for of course, her yeah. to do yeah. her job and yeah. activate the audio room. So that's yeah. where the challenge was. Yeah. Well, making complicated things isn't that hard. Making no, no. complicated things easy is where it gets hard. <laughs> Bingo. That's, that's the hard where, part. It's the user well, interface side of it that gets very complicated. That's where it's let's difficult. Let's use this sentence later on today as well. Oh, hell yeah. You'll no, see. I, You'll trust see. me. You'll I, see. I, yeah. I deal with it every day in my own yeah. company because we're building technology every day in my own company to mm -hmm. make the user experience better. And it's really easy for people to get out of control and to over-engineer and over-complicate things. And, but you have to, if you're going to do that, you then have to create an interface to take it back to the user in a very, very simple, understandable way. Otherwise, you're causing yourself hell. <clears throat> it's Absolutely. a version of hell, right. for sure. Now that's, yeah, and you know, one-on-one, -on -one, everybody can be smart. If you yeah. take the time and you <clears throat> want to learn, you're going to be smart. But in a crowd, in an emergency, in a situation where you're only for two hours, everybody is dumb. You know, it's like, you're right. just make it sense. No, and that's our user base. I'm not saying our user base is dumb. What I'm saying is that range is our user base for, for my company, GearSource. You know, we have guys like you who will come on our site and they know what they're doing. They know exactly what buttons they're going to do. And they, they're not nervous by the technology that's in front of them. But then mm -hmm. we might have a pastor from a church in some small town who's buying a new mm -hmm. video projector for his church and this is a very different client and we need to be able to serve both of those equally so um, you know it, it I've always said you know making complicated things is easy making complicated things easy is really hard Absolutely. and you know it, it, it's very true it's very very true mm -hmm. so I mean so that's then after really I mean, cool that's, really cool that's experience where, though I mean doing it is that. it is yeah Very cool but after experience. After two years, three years, I quit, and yeah. then I have. I could see more it getting projects. boring. Yeah, I yeah, could yeah, see yeah. it getting very boring. Well, when you are out from the show business industry, the the, the business governmental job is too slow. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Let me move well, on. Well, and it's just faster. it's more of the same. It's more of the same. It's yeah. more of the same. Exactly. You know, it, it gets boring. Even if you know your first day was really exciting because you were putting in these courtroom systems yep. that, like you said, same gear but different challenges. Yeah. yeah. And um, but after a while, it's the same courtrooms. You know, okay, this one's square instead of rectangular. Ooh, let's exactly. change the system. You know. But other than that, like, is it four speakers? Is it three speakers? Is it, you know, two cameras, and, one camera? Like, and funny enough, I, I felt like I was on tour because I oh, was really? in charge of the 34 courthouses. Oh, of the Jesus. Province. I was always on the road. Wow. With my team. I mean, not myself, but the team. We were responsible for these That's 34 wild. courthouses. So huh. you're just out from a worldwide tour. And you go back on tour locally, it's like, okay, yeah. come on, I'm tired. <laughs> but you're, you know, I hate to downplay it, but you're a glorified IT guy, basically, right, at that point. like, so, Well, with a technically technical level. I'll of say, course, yeah, technical level. very yeah. technical IT. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I know some really smart IT guys, by the way, so, you know, that, that yeah. like, create wireless uh, systems for racetracks for an, a Formula mm -hmm. One race or things like that. You know, I mean, this is an IT guy with a very specific set of knowledge that not a lot of people can do. Um, well, they will be engineering yeah. and I will be technically installing all this. Yes, if I may put yes, it. yes, okay. exactly. And I, I think around that time, like when you left there is when you started your company, right? It Ish. is, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So what, what created that? Like just, you know, I think it's time or was there a specific? I got bored too. I mean, yeah. I had big projects as a technical director later on with Cirque du Soleil, Moment Factory and stuff like that. And, yeah. You know, all these companies are having unicity where they are trying to get the wow effect. Mm -hmm. What's going to be next? Yeah. The client and the spectators are more and more hard to impress nowadays. Yeah. So what's next? What's the brightest idea that no one had? And, so, and, you know, as a technical director, I was facing the challenge to find out how to realize those new ideas, how to materialize it. Yeah. So it was not an off-the-shelf interactivity product. Yeah. So how do we make it happen? 
And in Montreal, I was struggling a lot to find a company that can build electronic component uh, and or technology and or specific effect. And ah, that. interesting. So you became so a specialist was, in that field, basically. Yes. So I design electronic, uh, custom electronic products, interactivity, uh, integr decor integration, motorization, oh. network automation, stuff like that. So like Cirque du Soleil, somebody there comes to you and says, Sebastian, you know, we're looking to do this new gag and um, here's what we need. Is this something you can do? And yes, you say yes. And, and then yes, you go and, and design this product and hand it to them. And, you know, these big companies such as Cirque du Soleil, Moment Factory or a, a Tate, uh, Think Well, whatever. Yeah. Uh, usually they have their own internal staff that are fully capable of doing it. Uh, yeah. But sometimes they are outsourcing toward my company. Yeah. Um, we're not competing. We're more or less, you know, uh, helping each other in sort of a way. Whenever yeah. they need help, I'm here. Uh, whenever they don't, they can do it on their own. But they are encouraging this industry where creating all the things something unique is fun yeah and when you present something to the public that they never saw everybody's like wow can you recall the first light show with drones the first Celine one Dion. yeah well exactly so like everybody was looking up so wow we never saw that so yeah. that's the wow yeah you know? yeah celine so who's it, was the celine one? the first one because that's the first uh, one i remember i don't i don't Indoors. recall either i was just yeah. I was just mentioning that the first drone light show was a yeah. premiere, basically. Yeah. So that was a new thing. So what is yeah. the new flavor now? Right. You know? Well, in our industry, uh, I think more so than most that I can think of, is always breaking things. Like, I know this is the traditional way of doing it, but we want to do this for the wow effect. Yeah. Again, like yeah. you said. Of course. And so our industry is always coming up with things like that. And Tate, you know, you just mentioned they're a very special company because they take it to extremes with, Absolutely. you know, big yeah. motorized systems that Absolutely. move things yeah. around the building or the stadium or whatever. Uh, and it all starts with someone's crazy idea, you know, and I, I exactly. had, uh, I had Dan Brown. I, I don't know if you know who he is, but he, he uh, was name, yeah. for years, he was the production manager for Metallica. And now I think his title is like creative director or something like that. But okay. So, you know, the band and him, they all decide, okay, we're going to do a stadium tour, um, but we want to do it in the round. And a stadium tour in the round has yep. never been done. So <laughs> how do we do an in the round stadium tour? Because obviously, you know, you don't have a grid above you. There's nothing to hang lights or sound mm -hmm. or anything from. What are we going to do? And so he came up with this idea of these towers. And I don't know if you've mm -hmm. seen any pictures or anything. I'm actually going yeah, to, yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. going to Edmonton this week tomorrow okay. to see the show. Um, but, you know, they came up with these towers and went to Tate and said, okay, we've got this crazy idea, you know, and Tate has such an incredible team for going, yep, we can do that. And they figure it out and they build these things and off they go, exactly. you know, and they're, they're, they go in and out easy. They're safe. You know, they're, they're, uh, they do yeah. what they're supposed to do safely. That's what I like about this show business industry. It's we incredible. can be as crazy as the idea is. Somebody finds a way to do it safely. Yeah, we will find safely. Out. Yeah, and, of course. And, you know, you're not going to kill any audience members and you're not going to kill your crew who have to put it <laughs> in and out every day. So, Hopefully not. <laughs> no, I love that stuff. So, yeah. first of all, IC events, what's the IC mean? Well, at several things. Uh, first of all, it sounds like I see, like ah, in French, okay. it's called yeah. je vois. So it, it yeah. just sounds like I see. Yeah, I see events. Uh, yeah, I get it. That's a kind of a wink to integrated circuits. Okay. With a chip. Yeah. You know, uh, the invisible that is uh, concrete. Okay. There's a funny way to juggle around yeah. or uh, innovation and creativity. There's, I don't know. This, I, I'm not really. It sounds like maybe you drink a lot. <laughs> oh, sometimes, sometimes. <laughs> just joking. <laughs> no, no but I mean, it's yeah, very I creative. Just, it's very, well, even just I just, IC events is, I, I didn't get it right away. But of course, as soon as you yeah. say it, I'm like, duh, that makes so much sense. Well, I couldn't make up my mind of, on, on what words to be used. So I yeah. Said, yeah. I see. I see. Just yeah, I see. Yeah, yeah. No, it's good. <laughs> So, but I see events is not like a, it's not a rental company. It's not a lighting company. It's not a sound company no. necessarily, right? 
No, we're, I mean, all of the above, if I may put it that way, because we are a company that is designing and creating custom electronic product for yeah. our show business industry, museum. So we're doing temporary, uh, permanent, we're doing international, local and stuff like that. But usually we're doing custom stuff. It's an excellent, uh, <clears throat> it's an excellent idea. And um, obviously there's a big need and I'm sure you know City Theatrical out of New York. Of course. Yeah, mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. City Theatrical did that for God knows how long in, in mm -hmm. the theater business primarily. But, mm -hmm. you know, like when, for example, Color Kinetics came out with the Color Blast, suddenly yep. people said, but we need barn doors, we need snoots, we need all these things, we need an power egg supplies. crate. Power supplies, we need, yeah. Power, special touring power supplies mm -hmm, and things. Mm -hmm. And so, you know... I think it's similar to Apple makes the iPhone and now you've got all these app developers who make the iPhone into something really cool. Mm -hmm. And so somebody could make a product and you, f you find solutions to make that product even better. And I love exactly. that idea because small companies with smart people, I think can move the world. I think you can, you can make changes that big companies can't because, you know, it's like a, it's like yeah, you're a, yeah. you're a little jet ski or a speedboat. They're a big ship and it takes them half a day to turn around. It takes you two seconds to turn around. Right. Yeah. Let's take a big company. Okay. Uh, any, any a big <laughs> company that's, let's say, I don't know, moment factory, they, yeah. they are on, I don't know, a hundred projects at the same time. Yeah. So even they're if they're smart and have a lot of, relevant engineer people and you know can you take a team of three guys and say you are not doing anything else than this yeah. for the next two months yeah well not really yeah. so basically sometimes they are outsourcing a specific project yeah to us yeah you know it, it was an example here but no I mean, it's a great example we got when we got a mandate we have to deliver it. So we are handling this part while the big client is doing many other things it. at the same time. Yeah, so, no, I love it. I love it. Yeah. I think it's a great, you know, when I started my company, GearSource, I, I had read a story uh, by a guy named Seth Godin. And Seth Godin's like an internet, uh, one of the pioneers of internet marketing and stuff. Very smart guy, wrote a lot of books and stuff. But he told a story about a particular, um, there's a like hippopotamus in Africa or wherever will sit with okay. their mouth open. And there's a particular little bird that flies inside mm -hmm, his mm -hmm, mouth mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. eats all the shit off his teeth. <laughs> he, yeah. he cleans the hippopotamus's <laughs> teeth, basically. Mm -hmm. And the moral of the story is you should be that bird because not only are you, you making the hippopotamus happy and solving a problem for him, guess who gets fed <laughs> from it? You know, yeah. you get all your food from the hippopotamus and it's kind of disgusting that I'm eating is, food out of the hippo. But it's a good example too, because it benefits both. Yeah. So he says, be that bird. And yeah. so when I created gear source, that's what I, that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to be that bird for larger companies, solving problems for these larger companies and each company they're paying you what to you is a great, piece of money, you know, like they pay you $10,000 to create this electronic thing for them. It's nothing, you know, the budget for yeah, the show no, might be no. 2 yeah. million and mm -hmm. they're paying you 10,000 to create mm -hmm. this little wow effect for them. And so I love what you're doing. I think it's a great business. One, one thing that I just learned from years now is, is how we are always on the edge of the new technology because the clients are always coming with new things, new needs, new yeah. demand, yeah. new gear, new tech. So we always have to learn. So we have a small team here that is always on the edge of what's coming next. It's so we true. do it and use it. Yeah. So it, we're having a lot of fun, basically. Well, and our industry, you know, it starts with the artists because, it is. <clears throat> you know, if, if uh, Beyonce is... <clears throat> if Beyonce's out touring and Taylor Swift is about to go on tour, she's yeah. going to tell her creative team, I want it to be cooler than Beyonce. Mm -hmm. You know, Beyonce mm -hmm. had 75 trucks. I want 90 trucks, mm -hmm. you know, or whatever, <laughs> whatever. Like they yeah. always want to outdo and they're pop stars and they have huge budgets. So you say yes and you find a way to do it. Right. Mm -hmm. And so it all starts with a seed and the seed often comes from, the artist who wants to outdo the last artist who did something, you know, if they flew drones over the stage, I want to, you know, fly 
live birds over the stage with lights exactly. strapped to their head or something, you know, like <laughs> that's the next one. Yeah. Whatever it is, they want to outdo the last one. And so we're constantly pushing the envelope. And, you know, my only fear is that sometimes infrastructure doesn't keep up with with this. And, you know, it's like, for right. example, I'm from Calgary. I live in South mm -hmm. Florida, but I'm from Calgary. And I, I'm now currently in I have a house in the mountains, in the Rocky Mountains. Okay. In uh, do you know where Banff is? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I'm, I'm near Banff. Wow, and cool. uh, so, um, you know, Calgary used to be the hot place for bands to stop when they were on tour of Canada, right? It was usually, you know, Montreal, maybe Halifax or something, Montreal, Toronto, Montreal, Toronto yeah. uh, maybe Winnipeg if, if it, it was a smaller band, um, Calgary and Vancouver. Mm -hmm. But sometimes yeah. it was just Montreal, Toronto, Calgary and Vancouver. Mm -hmm. Well, now Calgary's not even in the picture anymore. You got to go to Edmonton to see most concerts because the Saddle Dome roof doesn't hold most of these grids that are coming through mm -hmm. anymore because they're so much heavier than they used to be. And so, um, you Thanks know, to the video wall for this. <laughs> well, that's the thing. And, uh, you yeah. know, I mean, even when they built the Saddle Dome, the sound system was sitting on the stage or on the ground. It mm -hmm. wasn't mm -hmm. flown. You know, mm -hmm. so you've got a sound system, you've got a huge uh, lighting rig that instead of a thousand park hands, it's a thousand moving lights now. You've got a huge LED screen hanging from the mm -hmm. back wall where it used to be video projectors exactly. and it was just a screen hanging on the, on the, from the truss. So, mm -hmm. you know, it, like I worry that the infrastructure isn't keeping up quite as fast as, as the, uh, as the technology or as the size of these shows is growing because they're growing enormous. Yeah, um, they have many versions of the same show usually, but you're right. I mean, this is always related to what the, you know, the ceiling or the trucks or a team can do. And th with this kind of impact, they're trying to reach out. Yeah. LED wall is kind of a big deal now. I mean, mainly the power consumption before was for lighting. Now there's a kind of a lighting and video that are having right. the same assumptions yeah that's, that's yeah it's really funny no it's yeah. it's completely true and mm -hmm. so um you know i mean so i think some of those changes have forced infrastructure changes so i think a lot of the arenas that are being built now are hiring engineers who understand the needs of those like they go and talk to live nation or they talk to consultants who who know that these rigs just keep getting bigger and bigger yeah so yeah, yeah. and um you know, you're, you're having here um, a point where I'm going to be using this last example just to, to present a kind of a state of mind where my company stands, my yeah. both company stands, basically. Yeah. Show business industries is always using, um, I mean, I'm not going to be stealing because we're not stealing anything, but we're using technologies from elsewhere, such as network switches from Cisco. Of course. Cisco didn't invent its network switches for yeah. show business. We're using it. Yeah, like rigging motor and and hoist yeah. that haven't been designed for show business. No, you know how we carry those uh, lamps? It's a meat rack. Yeah. Well, meat rack is for. <laughs> Where for do you butchers. think that came from? Yeah, well, exactly. exactly. So basically, we're using technology. LED LED lighting source were invented by Philips, not necessarily for show business, right? Right. So so this is a kind of a funny way where everything that we invent in the show business never go back to the consumer. Yeah. That's funny. It's true. Like yeah. like if all of those great ideas were were only good for two hours of show. Yeah. Nothing can came out of there. It's true. It's a good and point. And that's a kind of a weird behavior. And yeah. That's why I decided to move it around. Yeah. No, I like it. I, I, I honestly, I love, uh, I think you're in a very good place in that business, especially now, you know, like we've said, where everybody's looking to push the envelope even further and uh, create the next cool thing or, or whatever. And, you know, you're just yep. finding ways to, to sort of bridge gaps in, in those designs and, and uh, make things work. Yeah, so it's and, good. Uh, we can help and elsewhere than the show business industry with yeah. those technology. So why not? So, you know, I'm very intrigued by uh, your the next thing that we're going to talk about, which is a company that you created called Devox, yeah. and um, I, I want to learn all about this technology because I I know some similar technologies, and 
uh, we can talk about that. And Absolutely. I also, yeah. I, uh, so I think this will kind of bridge us in a whole bunch of different directions. So okay. first, maybe if you can tell me uh, what is Devox, uh, you know, in, in layman's terms and sort of how it happened. Excellent. Or why I'll it start with this even. brief, exactly, brief yeah. history. Back in 2015, okay, I was technical director of a large show in Montreal called C2 Montreal. Okay. It's kind of a business trade show, B2B, uh, really famous keynote speaker, huge reputation keynote speaker, um, super exclusive conference, business conference, brain dating, anyways, big thing. Okay? Who, who big was the keynote speaker? Uh, I mean, over the years, we had Francis Ford oh, Coppola. Oh, several... I thought 2015 was a special one. I thought that's what you uh, were saying. No, 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 no. Oh, it, uh, okay. I, I've been part of C2 Montreal from two, the first edition, which was in oh. 2012. Okay. And the last one I was helping with was in 2021, I think. Okay, I see. Okay, okay. so anyway, this is kind of a roaster of keynote speaking. Yeah. It's a three-day, it was a three-day event, and uh, they kind of a, an impressive list of keynote speakers on several topics, uh, politicals, uh, engineers, uh, university teacher, artist, Snoop Dogg was there. Stuff like that. Sebastian, let me tell you a funny story quickly. Yeah. I'm a, I'm a crazy junkie of keynote speakers. Okay. I love Great. keynote speakers. So one time at, it was either LDI or Infocom, I was walking from the, ho from the Westgate Hotel over mm -hmm. to the convention center. And I don't know if you remember, but you pass the boardroom or the big uh, conference, whatever they're called, uh, banquet rooms uh, as you're going over to, uh, to the trade show. And I looked inside and I saw people all sitting and it looked like they were getting ready to have a keynote speaker up and I heard him being introduced. So I just mm. walked in there with my badge out and I found out it was a garage door conference. And okay. the keynote speaker they had was a guy named Jack Ma, who is the MIT guy who did the, you know, the movie 21? Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, where they were counting cards and doing this whole blackjack okay, thing. That yeah, was yeah. Jack Ma. And so hmm. he created a whole business around, you know, the science of numbers, basically. And so this was really swung around a business concept of why numbers are important, why things that happened in the past affect things that will happen in the future and things like that. I sat and watched an entire like 90 minute keynote speech in a garage door convention because I was just so interested in it. So it, it worth it because you're always learning something. I love day. keynote speakers. Oh yeah, and yeah. even if you don't, you disagree with the speech. You have a different state of mind to to challenge Completely yourself true. next time you yeah. are thinking about something. So well, it's and really that's important. Yeah. Like even yeah. again, if you're a if you're a Democrat, go listen to a Republican speak. Maybe you'll learn something, sure. and vice versa. Maybe you'll learn. Maybe you'll throw up all over yourself and hate it, but maybe you'll learn something. Who knows? You know. So, anyways, yeah. sorry for the sidebar there. No, 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 no problem. So, uh, yeah, so back in 2015, I was technical director for that event. We were having 3,500 guests per day over three days of event. We were having two main rooms for keynote speakers on the same site. Okay. And we are French-Canadian province, so it was French-English, both rooms, plus we have a Chinese delegation, so we were Mandarin as well. So... <laughs> Two places on the venue, I was having, uh, you know, a full schedule of keynote for three days in two different rooms where I needed to have a translation for French, English, and Mandarin. So back in 2015, it was only having FM transmission or infrared technology to carry the signal next up to the spectator. Yeah. So you are you are a ticket owner. You pay big bucks, by the way, to be there. This is super exclusive things, and you need to borrow a, a dedicated piece of receiver that has been charged, clean, whatever, in exchange of your ID card, just because you're going to be bringing back and stuff like that, just to have the instant translation. So I said, hmm, we're in 20, 2015. Isn't it something else better? So is that also this... human translators at the time? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, those yeah. are okay. We can we can talk about translation yeah, yeah, later if you want yeah, to, but I mean sure. no, but but because we were talking about that in the intro as yeah, well. Yeah, so yeah. Back then it was like those little uh, cubicles with the human being translators right. inside yeah. of it. So that's kind of the best translator, if I may. But anyway, so I was having these guys 
on site that we're translating. So all the signal from the microphone go to these guys, these guys' microphone go out to the ears of everybody else. That's how translation works yep. for this. And uh, back in 2015, I was like, wow, how many receivers do I have to rent? How many people will be using it? We're all bilingual in Montreal, so French English doesn't really matter. We have to offer it, but maybe people will not be using it. Or else I'm wrong and everybody will like to, to have yeah. it. So I rented for $70,000 of infrared technology and receivers just to support this instant translation. At the end of the three days of event, I landed six receiver oh, for my dreams because they were all speaking English and you know, oh, they didn't want it. So six yeah. for Chinese, uh, Mandarin. And for French and English, I had like 70 overall, but I rented 600. Oh, Jesus. That's so incredible. So you're like, come on, that's $70,000, a, yeah. a waste of money yeah. in my budget, technical budget. And I'm limited. I mean, this is not an open bar, yeah. right? Yeah. So back in 2016, I was still a technical director and I said to C2 Montreal uh, executive, I said, okay, guys, this is kind of a stupid word, 21st century, I guess something else is, it, it, you know, we can do something better, I'm pretty sure. So I, I he said, okay, well, just try to find out something. Back then, there was a lot of Blackberry still, mm -hmm. if you recall. Yes. Okay. Plus, internet was not necessarily what it is right now, the speed and limitation and stuff. Yeah. So cloud was a bit of a question. Apps were also out of a question, mobile app, because it was the early days. So back then, you didn't own your iPhone. It was your company iPhone. You cannot install an app. Plus, you are here for, let's say, one afternoon, and you have one keynote that you want to attend to. You're not going to be installing an app for two hours. Just leave me alone with your fine prints. I just want to listen to that guy. So I said, okay, no app, no cloud. I said, okay, no dedicated receiver. Wow, we're going to find out this kind of product. So I was looking for a technology, a product that mine his own business. Analog audio in, stream out, local only through a web page. Nothing was existing. It was not available in the market. It was nothing on that I've seen. Why before. through a web page, though? Because that's super polyvalent. Every cell phone thinks it's a web radio. It's a web page. It's browsing. You don't ah, have to install an app. You do ah, own the app. Interesting. Already. Yeah. May it be Chrome, Safari, whatever your web browser, you have it already. You yeah. Don't have to install nothing. Mm, interesting. So I was back then. I was talking about scanning a QR code, but it was you know back in 2016. It was only for automation and industry. Yeah. For counting. It was really early. Bottles yeah. on conveyors yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah. So I was kind of an alien saying, "Hey, we can scan a QR. It's going to be loading a web page." And it was like, "Hey, are you crazy? What are you talking about? I mean, no one will understand." So I used this 2016 experience at C2 to just build an enormous bench tech only for myself uh, with their approval by using the infrastructure, the network, the Wi-Fi, the antennas, and, you know. And I decided to take a split in the audio source from the tra translator to carry it around through a web page. Back then, I was not even having a name for D-Box. It was just like this kind of streaming solution. Yeah, it's Sebastian's thing. Well, exactly. <laughs> Just plug it into Sebastian's <laughs> thing. Yeah, but yeah. it was like eight seconds. It's eight seconds delay, seven laptops, something stupid. I yeah. Thought, Does it work to move forward? With, yeah. You know? Turns out to be really efficient, and I was like, mm, you know, might be holding on to something here. So I called the lawyer firm and I said, guys, I, specialist in in, in uh, patent. It's like I'm. I, I guess I'm too dumb. I cannot find anything on the market that fits what I need. You know, when you're buying a self-powered speaker, you want to plug it in the wall, plug a signal on the back plate, bring the volume up and done. So where is my analog audio in, stream out, local only through a web page? Where is it? And it's, it was actually nowhere. So I decided to invent it because the, the, the lawyer, the patent specialist, they said, well, we can't find nothing. So, oh, interesting. So I just, you know, move forward my, my idea and loop in uh, one or two employees with me that were, you know, coder and geeks. So I said, okay, guys, here's, a, here's the 
straight line. I want to go that way. And this is a technology that mine is on business. So basically, when you are integrating DVOX into a permanent or temporary installation, the only thing you have to do is put analog signal in and it's going to be streaming out through a customizable web page, period. You give that QR to your attendees, they have nothing to install at all. You just connect to so, the right Wi-Fi. As a, as a user uh, interface, so I take out my iPhone, I you know go to the QR code or whatever, click on it, does it just say as simple as English, French, Chinese, German? Absolutely. And I just push one of those buttons you, and sound starts yeah. coming out of my headphones? Exactly. So wow. this was the first usage, meaning that to take your example here, you are a spectator at C2. Rule first, connect to the Wi-Fi. I'm not cloud. Connect to the Wi-Fi. You need to be inside of the same network as I am. Okay. Connect to the Wi-Fi. Second rule, click on this link or else scan this QR code. You need to browse to a web page. Yeah. But if you access this web page through the same Wi-Fi as I am, you're going to be granted access to all the audio streams. Excellent. And now, this is only a virtual button. We can name it pilot, Ferrari's Pilot. We can name this, uh, you know, Statue of Liberty, uh, uh, you know, description. We can yeah. name it English translation. We yeah. can name whatever we please. And we're binding this virtual button with a physical input. Interesting. So in, in, div, in a C2 situation, French, English, and Mandarin, you were simply having a web page that is loading on your Chrome and Safari, whatever, and like, oh, I got three buttons. French, English, Mandarin. Perfect, oh, yeah. French. Yeah, Book. simple, yeah. And go. And so was that a, a hardware and software solution? This is a complete solution altogether, meaning yeah. hardware, firmware, and software. Okay. So we got this specific and unique design we invented from the idea the entire solution yeah. basically the acquisition device is the hardware the firmware obviously that deals with this yeah and it talks with the software which is basically a web page a website on our on our end and the so, the hardware is like some kind of a fancy uh a to d converter or something kind of kind of yeah. i make it to you rack space yeah uh, for to make it easy so it's kind of a standard form yeah and uh we can go up to four analog input xlr input on on a two u rack space device yeah and then there's a network cable out and you put it on so simple network. yeah it so is, you're it literally is. just wying off of each of those feeds from the four translators of and course. or any auxiliary out of any sound desk, just give yeah. me whatever analog signal you want. So if I'm translating, you know, if I'm the U.S. government and I'm translating the president's speech into 15 languages, does that no mean I have to have four boxes? Exactly. Okay. As long as they're cool. on the same network, you're good to go. And they can all go on to the same web page, and so there would be 15 languages on that web page? Absolutely. Oh, yeah. geez. Absolutely. You figured it all out. That's yeah, pretty cool. So, so at first, it was just like, a great idea which i thought and then i decided that well hold on no that's 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 kind of a big thing so i created this second company that is now independent from ic events so that the early days were under ic events but then yeah i said oh hold on so i created this company yeah for DeVox it went from itself. it went from being a product to a company to a business yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. i i underestimate the reach of this simplicity because if you think about what i just said we take any analog signal and stream it out, okay? Local only. Back in 2016, Wi-Fi was not super, you know, common and popular and well integrated. But now you're not going yeah, to everywhere. a hotel that is not having Wi-Fi. Yeah. You're going to an airport that is not having Wi-Fi. Yeah. It's everywhere. Yeah. So we're having a lot of pull these days into the audio impairs industry. Because you may not have a translator, but you may need to have a personal amplifier. You might be a little deaf. You might only need a little amplifier. So audio impair, instant translation for conferences, business center, conference center, convention center. It's a plug and play device. It's a no brainer. You just plug into the network, give me a feed from your desk and you're good to go. So instant translation, digital signage. Think about all of these assumptions that we're having since so many years. Why are you in an airport where there's 3,000 TV screens and they're all on mute? Obviously enough, you cannot have speaker yeah. boxes. Yeah. But you got your cell phone, 
you're a tourist, you're here three hours, there's Wi-Fi, you don't need a SIM card, you're on the Wi-Fi. Yeah. There's no data plan needed. So you don't even have to bother with your international traffic or whatever. And there you go. You can have the feed from all the television screen. Yeah. Are you familiar with an app called Tunity? Yeah. It's so, only working in the US for, for a couple of channels. It works for a lot of channels because I, I used to use it all the time because, you know, my girlfriend doesn't like football. She's not a football fan or whatever. So sometimes mm -hmm. on Sunday you go to a bar or whatever and... If you go to Buffalo Wild Wings, same problem. You know, they have 50 TVs, and yep. the one game you want to watch is on that TV right there, but they're mm -hmm. not going to change the sound for you so that everyone can hear that TV. They're going to play whatever is the big game that day or something, right? And so really? Tunity, Tunity, you can just basically point the camera on your phone. It'll look, and it'll go, oh, that's the Green Bay Packers game or whatever, and mm -hmm. um, it'll just bring up the sound. And then you can dial it in to, to get rid of any latency or anything. Uh, mm -hmm. I think it's pretty friggin' cool. It is. <laughs> yeah. But it's still an app and it's still cloud. But True. it is really cool. True. It yeah. is really True. cool. And, you know, we got a lot of competitors and or um, there's many apps that are we can have instant commentary for sport business industry. That's what we are doing. That's one of our big market too. Yeah. So we can have the commentators into the, the stand, into the bleacher for all the twenty five thousand spectators you want to. And yeah. there's a couple of apps that can do as well this kind of service. But yeah. we are not infringing any broadcasting rights. We're not cloud. Interesting. Huh. Plus we're not using five G data as well. So whenever the five G is Scrap because there's 30,000 people in the venue. We don't mind. We're Wi-Fi. And we're having LAN traffic, internal traffic. So it's super, super low into any environment. Even old generation Wi-Fi system. Huh. Really so, interesting. I mean, the, sim the, the simplicity brings that versatility. So in an environment where you simply need to to give the sound to everybody in the audience. You don't have to, to have a lending counter with an employee that will be cleaning up the devices. Everybody's having his own cell phone. Well, sports is, is a great example because, yeah. I mean, you can listen to whatever announcer you want to listen to. You know, if you're a Canadian and you're at a hockey game in, in the United States, for example, uh, yeah. you could listen to the, the Canadian announcers. Uh, exactly. And, um, so I see that as a very, very good use case where a lot of other products I'm familiar with are not so good generally. And um, that makes a lot of sense. So have you, have you signed with any teams yet or, or that's just we really have, early stage still? Well, there's a lot that I can't say right oh, okay, now. Okay. Teams, league and whatever. Yeah. But we are, we are involved with the Australian Open tournament since uh, last year. So oh, cool. we are going yeah, so we were having a really nice experience with these guys. Uh, we, I just landed in Melbourne uh, with my devices, and within 20 minutes, we're up and running. And we were connected onto the Melbourne wow. Olympic Park huh. Wi-Fi, which was already in place, already yeah. covered the exterior section. I don't yeah. have to. It's, it's there. So they gave me one network cable. Plug it in. There you go. What's the IP address you want me to fix? Okay, and we're good to go. Then so it was it. it and is, is there latency? 0 0.04. Damn. So that's so almost real time. <laughs> actually, we had this funny problem where we were having the feed from the court, the tennis court. Okay. So when you were seating, seating inside of the venue by, you know, looking onto the players, you were snap on it. You, you're not hearing the ball twice when it yeah. hits the floor. It's yeah. going boom, boom, yeah. right on it. That's good. But on the general admission section outside, all of the LED screen were only having two tiny speaker boxes, super shy tiny yeah. boxes, because they don't want to be blasting everyone. So we were saying, hey, guys, scan this QR. Yeah, I'm a tourist. I don't have a SIM card. You don't have to. It's on a Wi-Fi. Yeah. Well, I don't want to be installing an app. You don't have to. No way. Within 10 seconds, they're on. Yeah. So they were listening to the audio from the court directly by looking to a Jumbotron. And the audio is before the video. Exactly. Yeah, that's, that's where I problem. was heading. Yeah. We needed to have a delay because yeah. like, 
Dev. Yeah. <laughs> we didn't talk That's about a that problem long. at that point. Yeah. yeah. Fast no, But I can see it for time. so many sports, like motorsports, which happens to be Absolutely. one of the ones I love. Um, mm-hmm. But certainly any of the arena sports and stadium sports, football and all of those things. Uh, sports bar, you name it. I mean, this is so versatile, so easy. Well, and simple, like just really, really simple setup and stuff, because most of these things require, you know, a lot of work. And this one, you just go out and boom, you're ready to go. And you were touching this this uh, specific topic earlier when when you're um, aiming for large uh, admission, la- large user interface, it yeah. has to be simple. Yeah. So when you're loading a web page, even the format is simple. It's neat. It's small. It's it's filling your screen. There's only a couple of buttons. You don't even have to yeah. wonder where it is. It's a basic browsing. And for the uh, let's say. For the organizer, you can customize that page. And we are giving just enough options for you guys to fit your logo on it, the colors on it, just to rename the feeds and stuff like that. Just just enough to fit your own pen tone yeah. color and stuff. You don't want to have web designers on staff so that you can exactly. redesign the page or whatever. But you want to be you want to have put your logo. Another, exactly. You want yeah. to add a stream 10 minutes before the game? You can. No yeah, problem. That's cool. And no, then what about really cool. as far as loading it up, like there's no issues with putting, whether it's 100 people or 1,000 or 10,000 people, doesn't we, slow we things can down? We up or... to 25,000 people per input. Ah, interesting. And it doesn't slow us down at all because the only thing you are doing is downloading the visual of the web page. Yeah. This is kind of loading the Google search bar. Yeah. So it might take a little longer if there's a lot of people, but hey, it's counting in one second, yeah. two. Yeah. So, so whenever you've got the visual, you click play, and it's an internal traffic. So there's no. But it's audio there. only. It, it, uh, yeah, on purpose. But it would be really cool if it was video too, because. <laughs> uh, no, that's where I had this difference because there's a lot of apps that are already offering video, and without an app, you cannot. Because yeah. if you kill the screen. What will happen to your video feed? Of course, it will yeah. Stop. Yeah. No, I'm so, just thinking. Obviously, like to be able to get different feeds and stuff, you know, different camera angles and like yeah, obviously, the thing is, <laughs> consumers of of sporting events in particular, concerts, are getting so much more spoiled with you know the interactivity that they want to. A lot. You are you are right about this kind of uh, usage for. Um, let me let me take an example with NASCAR. These guys are having a huge crowd. It's like three three hundred thousand spectator over the oval and stuff like that. It's big big sport. Uh, they I could have named any motorsport basically, but they have a lot of viewing angles. And Formula E, there's cameras everywhere on these cars. That's really really cool. So you're absolutely right having this kind of. Uh, you know, camera shoot is really cool, but hey, you just paid your ticket and you are there. Just look up. It's in front of you. So if you were to integrate video, you will need an app, first of all, meaning that you will need to carry signal up to the cloud and go back. So you're infringing rights. And if you are in a conference and you're having a video, you'll be looking at your phone like this and the speaker, the keynote speaker will only see the top of your head because you're looking at your damn phone. Yeah. Yeah, and I've true. been asked about subtitle. I've been asked about video. I've been asked about dealing with the delays, integrating a DSP. And I'm like, no, that's yeah. where I stand. Simple. Yeah. No, there's a, there's a huge uh, benefit to keeping it as simple as you have. Um, you know, I still don't understand, though, how you get around the, the rights. Like, as far as, you know, Okay. Because you're basically taking a signal that you may yeah. or may not have. Well, I guess you do have a right to because they've connected their audio cable into well, your system. First of all, the, the signal feeds are coming from the production company and or the event itself. Mm-hmm. So if these guys are asking the permission to the broadcaster, they're giving me a hard line that is a, that has been approved. That's the permission. I, yeah. It is. So this is not on my side. I'm streaming whatever yeah. you give me yeah. first. Second thing, just forget about Devox a second and think about having a self-powered speaker box in a room. If you're not in the room, you don't hear it, right? Yeah. So it's not cloud. Yeah. In the room, you don't hear it. So we're using the Wi-Fi to carry signal around. I'm not saying the internet. I'm saying the Wi-Fi. Yeah. There's a difference in between the Wi-Fi local yeah. and the Wi-Fi that goes on. The Interesting, internet. yeah. 
So uh, it's not even a problem for the bandwidth because we're not going up and down. We're local only. Interesting. Hmm. You know, I, like I've had so many conversations with people in, in the industry about the idea of, you know, a concert with no sound, you know, no speakers, mm -hmm. you know. We are disco. We are having silent disco. Really? Right downtown in Montreal. A bunch a of people festival. with headphones on that are just exactly. having a great old Over, time. After 11 o'clock. That's wild. Having a great time in the street. That's wild. You know wild. what we did in France? Several languages drive in movie theater. Yeah. We were having Wi Fi antennas on, on tripods all over the parking lot. Yeah. People were coming in. You want to have it French? Click French. You want to have it original version? Click original. And you have it in English in your car. That's crazy. Yeah, that's wild. I mean, <clears throat> the scary thing is, and, and I'm sure you've got, yeah. a, you've got a, uh, a response to this, but <clears throat> technology is moving so quickly right now mm -hmm. that. It, you know, it's almost like there's 50 options to do similar things. And, you know, because of the direction that you've gone with the simplicity and staying on Wi-Fi and not having cloud-based or an app or anything, uh, it seems like there's some longevity to it. You know, it's not really. No. Let me explain. First of all, we are retrocompatible with all the generation of web browsers and we're HTML5. So we can update our system remotely if ever there's an update coming. So right. it's, it's super easy. And yeah. we're following the tendency of the web browser themselves, yeah. such as Google Chrome, Safari, and stuff like that. So the longevity is not necessarily an issue on our end because we are a web page. Yeah. When I talk about longevity, I mean of the tech itself. So, for example, mm -hmm. um, you talk about hearing impaired. And, you know, Apple has convinced themselves that they're going to deal with hearing impaired through AirPods. Mm -hmm. You know, they're just mm -hmm. basically going to amplify the sound in AirPods and you can control how much it's amplified directly on your iPhone. Cost you nothing. It's in your AirPods mm -hmm. that you already own. Mm -hmm. And um, it's a great solution. It's a very simple solution. Translation. Sure, why not? Translation. Mm -hmm. Obviously, you've already mm -hmm. got, I believe Google has it in their phones already. Uh, where you've got instant translation uh, to many different languages, live, straight through your headphones. Uh, and so I think some of these things are being handled with very simple technologies, well, very complicated technologies, but very simple devices, the phone in your hand. And um, so that when I'm talking about longevity, I'm talking yeah, about and, and, how long is this technology going to be needed is, is when I'm talking well, about long, longevity. May I ask about the speaker boxes as well? Are we going to be rid of speaker boxes? My point is all of those things that you're talking, and I will also add to your example, this new technology where you can have this kind of uh, sound beam. You're in a restaurant and you can say, okay, here pods, I just want to be talking with that person in front of me. And it's kind of doing a sound beam right in front yeah, of me. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's, that's great. Yeah. But I mean, if you are into an arena lo looking to an, an hockey game, an hockey match, Okay, AirPods, follow the puck, highly doubt. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, I mean, yeah. I'm not pretending to replace all of these solutions. No. I know that consumer products and yeah. or apps will be tried all over the time. So yeah. this That's is not true. an issue yeah. at all. Yeah. And all of these apps that are doing, basically, you, can, you have to compare Devox with all the apps. You can yeah. pick one. You need to compare with all the apps. Yeah. Just try them all. Yeah. I'm talking with the sport industry since, the, you know, mainly two years now with the Australian Open and stuff. Yeah. So all the big leagues, all the big teams. And, oh, we're using this app. Oh, we are using this app. Oh, we are using this one. They're all having a different one. Yeah. How does it go? Well, a few adoptions. People don't like it. No, how come? Well, because this is only the men that downloaded it or yeah. the women. The kids couldn't have it. And they didn't figure it out. Uh, they don't have the, the right generation. And we have to support the app on the App Store. And it's like, right, be my guest. Try them all. Yeah. And the broadcasters refuse to give the feed because it is cloud-based. Yeah. So they, they're giving you a delayed feed. Yeah. Yeah, but which is let's, useless. Let's take this example, okay? Let's take this stupid example where you cancel one seat in the first row. You just decide that this seat 
is not for a spectator, it's a microphone. And it's beaming widely, directly onto the field. Yeah. Okay. And you can have a button which is called first row seat. So whatever, if you're in the nosebleed up there, you click first row seat. So we can, with Devox, have this versatility to, to inject new audio mix signal. Let's take the commentators and the same feed without the voice. So it's only like sound enhancement. Interesting. So if you were having an app, for instance, or hit by earbuds, how will you be able to tune in all of these features? See, this is always, so, this is always my question though, Sebastian. Like I think if, if you want people to go to a concert and wear mm -hmm. headphones instead of, instead of having a line array sound system or whatever, um, I think to get there, there has to be so much interactive capability. So I can, I've got my own equalizers. I can tune my own mix. I can have more bass, less mid, whatever I want to do. I can change uh, languages. I can have Taylor Swift in Chinese, God forbid. Uh, you know, so I think all of those types of things need to exist before it becomes a really great user experience. Well, it depends on how many feeds. Okay, one thing funny. If you are attending an hockey game and yeah. you have, uh, I don't know, TSN feed, let's say. Okay, yeah. You got one broadcaster feed. So you open up the Devox page and you have only one button. Like, oh, cool. Or don't need it. But if there's local team, two broadcaster, visitor team, two broadcaster, ice microphone, star player of the day microphone, yeah. DJ and house speaker, and blah, blah, blah. And you give a lot of options. You got all these feeds yeah, already. That. They're going to the obi van. Yeah. So when you're loading the page, you feel like you need to pick and choose. Oh wow, I got all the choices. Okay, so I'm gonna pick. You feel like you have to pick one. Yeah. It, can you imagine this versatility over your headphones, headbuds, no. with all these yeah. smart things? I, I mean, well, I think the challenge you're always gonna have there. As far as the, the app and the cloud and all of that, latency is always going to be a problem. And exactly. with yours, latency isn't a problem, apparently. So mm. what about reliability? Like, does the web page ever crash or anything like that? It happened. I mean, not yeah. on our end, actually. Yeah. Sometimes people are refreshing the page by mistake or they're loading the page from home or something. Like that, so they have to refresh it once on site. But I mean, hey, it's basic browsing. So does your phone have, have to be, does the screen have to be on? No. Okay. No, that's why we're using audio only on purpose. Yeah. If you were to have video or subtitle or bumper in or whatever it is, you need to you need to fake something in your phone. Basically, it's called an app. Yeah. So if you're doing audio only through a web page, any web browser thinks you are web radio. Interesting. I like so it. Kill the screen, put it in your pocket. Yeah. And by carrying signal only audio, it's super super light into any. Wi-Fi environment. So your business model currently, as far as your sales strategy and stuff, is it is it uh, rental or, or a sale? We are positioning ourselves as manufacturer, what we are. Okay. So basically, we are having a network all over the world right now. So a lot of our confirm and we are dealing contracts as we speak, so I can't yeah. say too much, yeah. but with several countries at the same time. So basically, what we're doing right now is building this kind of... Uh, huge worldwide network yeah and we'll be positioning ourselves as manufacturer so there's but the product answer. will sell it's not a rental model ideally it will be sell yeah but, you know if you're having a company that is doing large event yeah you could create a rental they will be buying it yeah. and they will be renting it yeah it's not yeah anything. no i mean if you're doing if you're doing production for um meetings and 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 you know corporate events and things like that, it would make sense to have them in your stock and rent them out to clients. But yeah, and yeah, but also you could obviously go in and sell a system to a convention center or to a, absolutely. Uh, yeah. So, um, no, and I'm, I'm original, curious. I, I'm just curious about that because like for all of the weird fringe markets, you know, like uh, my son grew up a, a go-kart racing driver and then a mm -hmm. car racing driver. Oh, and, cool. uh, and even go-kart tracks now, they have video, they have announcers, 
they have, and then they have these horn terrible speakers all over the parking lot or wherever the, the go-kart track is. And most of those tracks now are, they have Wi-Fi, And yeah, so it would make so much sense. But I, again, like maybe after the call, I'll ask you what the pricing looks like and stuff, because maybe it's too expensive for an application like that, a smaller application like that. Doubt. Really? <laughs> I highly doubt. Yeah. So, it so it's simple, less than yeah, I would so. expect. Right. Uh, yeah, we'll see. We'll see. Yeah. But um, the the thing is, just take this karting example here. Okay. Yeah. So you are a dad, proud dad, looking at your son mm -hmm. racing, right? Yeah. Okay. Just, and you have this authorization from the racetrack to use. Let let's imagine your son is having a microphone in his helmet, so for co pit crew communication and stuff like that. Yeah, like, they can't like do any that. motorsport. They can't. No, do but that. It, yeah, they are already doing it for the motorsport yeah, industry yeah, and course, F1 Formula and stuff. One. So. Yeah. So let's say you have other microphones that are picking up the sound of the engine, the squeaking tires and stuff like that. So you take all of those feet into one mix and you have a button which is called name of your son. And yeah. you click on it and you are inside of the cart with yeah. him. Yeah, yeah, that's You might crazy. not have this communication, yeah. read, but you will be feeling that yeah. you are driving Yeah, no, that that's cart. cool. Yeah, that's cool. No, but I'm just talking about even the announcer, you know, who, mm -hmm. because you're never close enough to a speaker where you can hear him. And, <laughs> and, uh, if you go yeah. on YouTube, because they, they generally are, are publishing these or doing live streams out via YouTube, but live streams are not live. You know, they're, they're exactly anywhere from two to 20 second, you know, delays. And uh, I have a funny example for you here. We were showcasing Devox to a client. Uh, in a um, monster truck event. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> can you hear the commentators at the monster truck yeah, event? Yeah, of course I can. Yeah. <laughs> hey, oh, how y'all yeah. doing? Hello. <laughs> wow. Yeah. <laughs> this is yeah, you need to all. translate from that to English. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, okay. Yeah. So just earbuds, just get rid of the engine noise. Yeah. 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 yeah good luck with that. Yeah. It's yeah. like it's bouncing all over the place. Of course. So that's, yeah. That... You can't hear what they're saying. So that's my, that's my. Yeah. You know. No, that's a good example. So Devox means digital vocals. Is that what it stands Direct, direct Vox. Basically, oh, okay. at first, just if we roll back, roll back a bit, it was invented for instant translation without yeah. noticing the reach yeah so it's direct box yeah basically interesting yeah oh i mean what a cool technology i'm really excited for you i think uh you know even just and when you say just it's a huge market but just the corporate uh convention meeting business alone i house think is worship. massive house, house of, of worship. worship house of worship is I another mean, big you one you got you got a tray full of old cell phones that are not, not having a sim card yeah. But they are Wi-Fi capable. That's a, that's a receiver right there. Right. Yeah. So if you take an older generation that might be having hearing problem and stuff like that, hey, here's your personal amplifier done. Yeah. Well, I mean, even kids, even just translation, you know, for house of worship. Like I, I live in South Florida. You know, you've got a huge Hispanic population along with mm -hmm. you know other people too, Russian, German, whatever, and mm -hmm. um. I could see it used in houses of worship, even just in Florida. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, to me, I, I think this is a really, really cool product. I'm, I'm pretty excited about it. So it is, it is so simple that you can even wait for the bus, scan a QR that will be connecting you to the Wi-Fi, redirect to the right page, and hearing the billboard right in front of you before the bus is coming in. Huh? It's that quick. You don't have to download an app. Yeah. Interesting. There's no speaker boxes. It's in exterior places. But well, give me the audio feed and it's been a yeah. Wi-Fi antenna and you're good to go. This is a world that so many different companies are trying to tackle, which is yep. some form of connectivity to your cell phone. You know, whether it's, mm -hmm. uh, uh, it's, it's just Internet of Things uh, is one exactly. area where they're trying to, you know, either triangulate you and bring you to a certain part of a shopping mall, for example. Uh, well, two things. Yeah. Two things. That is exactly why I do have and I do own my patent, yeah. first of all. Of course, okay. yeah. Second thing, I cannot announce it, like, publicly. I hate but I can things tell like you. That. No, but I will tell you after okay. if you want to. All right. May I or should I? We'll see, but we get we <laughs> are can. just on the edge to to announce a huge partnership with a huge company that is doing huge Wi-Fi integration. Good for you. Let me put it that way. Congratulations. Good yeah. for you. So on the audio side, you already have everything you need: microphone, yeah. console, Obi-Van, 
whatever you need to decide. But when I talk and about Wi-Fi, yeah, uh, no, it's amazing. I, I can understand well enough your technology to know why okay. you've done it the way you've done it. It makes mm -hmm. a huge amount of sense. Again, you're talking about live music, live sporting events, live uh, keynote presentations, live, so. you know, you, latency is an issue. And you've done away with that issue. And also mm -hmm. connectivity and, again, forcing people to download an app and forcing people mm -hmm. to do all kinds of, they're all like, we're so spoiled now. Like, I remember when downloading an app wasn't a big deal. Now it's like, oh, you're going to make uh, me yes. do this, yeah. you know. And then if you're like me, you're a clean freak on your apps. I don't like adding mm -hmm. apps. <laughs> you know, I've got exactly. them all perfectly organized in files, mm -hmm. you know. And, and uh, so... I get it. I completely get it. So let me ask you, one of my favorite topics is, is AI. And yeah. so I, again, I'm not smart enough to be able to talk to a really smart AI person, but I'm smart enough to talk to most people in our industry who are either scared to death of AI mm -hmm. uh, or in some cases, they're just ignoring it. Like the, it's, okay. it, you know, I don't even want to talk about AI. It's not something I pay attention to right now. Okay. So I love AI. Yeah. I encourage people to use it carefully. I think that it is a little harder than than we think we thought about let's take translation for it as a good example. Okay, just aim to this example with translation. Yep. I can English is a second language for me. Okay. Sometimes yeah. I'm not having the right grammar formulation, stuff like that. So therefore it might be translating a little weird because not necessarily understand what yeah. I'm saying. That's one thing. Super technical speech, sometimes it's hard. Yes. Sarcasm, humor, nonverbal. I've been talking with a lot of translator, human being, I mean, physical person that translate, yeah. and they are telling me that they are so much in demand since everybody's trying AI. I'm not saying it's not good enough. I'm saying it's not good enough yet. And you know what? If you want to take your own laptop, Okay, right now you take your laptop, you're, in, you're installing an acquisition card, for instance, and you're using an AI to translate. Good, give me the Jack 1.8 out, give me the headphone jack out to Devox and I will be streaming it over. Yeah. So next week, you're going to be trying another one, another software. So I'm not into trying to integrate a an, an translation solution inside of Devox. It's working just fine as it is right now but be my guest use whatever you please yeah you're a broadcast solution you're not a translation exactly. solution you're a broadcast exactly. solution i'll broadcast yeah. whatever you want me to if you want me to exactly. broadcast you know the hi-hat from the drums because i want everybody to just hear the hi-hat from the drums that's what i'm gonna yeah. do you know and depending you know take about the courthouses again okay yeah. these translator have to be someone in an insulated boot inside of the room yeah. with a visual on everyone because mm -hmm. they have to translate the nonverbal as well. Mm. Yeah. They have to wait by the end of the sentence before translating to pick exactly what it is. Interesting. What I'm telling you, green. Yeah. Green, green, green. Yeah. It would be translating as the color. Yeah. But in fact, this guy, green, 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 this guy was so green. Yeah. Well, it's not the same thing at all. Yeah, yeah. So that's what I'm saying about AI, use with caution. And right. I'm not sure I want to fit it in. So let me argue with you for a second on that one. Go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> so go ahead. I think translators who are saying AI isn't ready and AI is not going to replace them and stuff are full of shit. <laughs> you know, I okay. think I think <laughs> translators are the first people who are going to be uh, heavily replaced by AI because... Not, not for any reason, and this is by no means a slight against translators. They're very important people and historically have been very, very important people. But it's a very easy thing to replace with AI. And Opinion noted. <laughs> is it going to get words mixed up every now and then? Yes. I mean, it's just like how many people right now are using AI for coding? Do you just mm, take mm -hmm. the code that it puts out and boom, put it straight into an electronic device and it works? No, of course not. You no, have no, to, no, no. you still have to check it, change some things. You know, like uh, I use it when I'm writing documents or when I'm writing a story or, or a press release even. I will use AI, but then I go over it and I change it. So AI is doing 80% well, of the work. I'm doing the other 20%. And 
So that I think it might be a little just too fast adoption. That's my that's my personal that opinion. I agree with. Now I'm not arguing with you on that one. The the speed of AI is scaring the hell out of me right now. Like it's moving yes. faster probably than maybe any technology ever has. Maybe the internet. I mean, the internet moved pretty quickly when when it first started to where it is today. Uh, but still, AI is moving so internet, much more quickly. Internet was slowed down by the computer themselves, by the hardware to true. deal with it and the bandwidth. Yeah, so true. now AI got no limit. Yeah, it doesn't have those limitations, so, so it's moving very quickly. Well, the limitations, you know, you I guess, about... are, are the hardware uh, to carry it. You know, the, the computing power is, is a and limitation. You might, but... And you might be right about the translator that will be out of, out of job soon and you know, maybe you are translators you are and right, travel but, agents, I think are the two that are going to be impacted the most, most quickly. But if you take the translator, there's still a lot of solution these days just to keep the translator off site. So even zoom have integrated a solution where the translator can be off site. Yeah, yeah, and true. there's a lot of software that, that are specialized in keeping the translator off site. So not now you might be right, but not now. Yeah. Yeah. And as I was saying, just take any software you please, any AI you please. Give me the jack out. Yeah, your jack I know. Out I love that. Yeah, I love that. And I love, I, again, I'm not comparing AI to what you're doing. I'm just, uh, you know, I think AI is going to pick on very specific things one mm -hmm. at a time, you know, whereas your solution is for a lot of different things and isn't specific. AI is very specific. It's very good at specific things. When you try to use chat GPT to create images, they're usually crappy images. But if you go to an image generation AI tool and create images, they're very good because that's all it does. It's very specific to that. It's learned a lot of information to be able to do that, etc. So um, I think we'll see the merge with AI and technology a little nicely later on. Because I think so too. Yeah. At one end, you need a microphone. At the other end, you need headphones. What's yeah. in between? So they will need to have this blend. Yeah, it's a good point. No, it's a nicely organized. Well said. You know, at one end you have ears. You need a microphone. <laughs> yeah, microphone and headphones. So. What's connecting them? Yeah. Exactly. Well, and so. and again, with latency being, I think, one of the biggest uh, no nos. You know, you can't have latency. Otherwise, to me, the tool is ineffective if it's got latency. It's like I don't want to use it because I want to hear that. Oh, yeah. You know what's exactly. funny is exactly. we'll have to have a conversation after the conversation as well because Sarah's listening to this and biting her tongue right now because Sarah worked for Formula One and one of her jobs there was with a company that was producing a fan vision. Uh, mm -hmm. for for people who could rent it, and then they could mm -hmm. watch different ca camera views and things on this little box that they would carry around with them and connect their headphones to it and stuff. So she's going to have an opinion as well uh, on all of this. Um, Problem. So uh, yeah. how, how uh, I don't even know where to go with that. Like, I mean, to me, it's an incredible te technology, and it's a today technology. It's ready to go, right? It's not... It is. Yeah. It, no, no, it's not a prototype at all. It's yeah. kind of a ready-to-market product. Yeah. I mean, we have resellers all over the place. Yeah. And, um, you know, this is way too simple to be ignored. And one of the main thing I'm receiving from all of the presentation I'm doing, all the demo I'm doing, and all the clients I'm, you know, presenting to, is always the same thing. It's like, wow, how simple. And all of the clients are saying, finally, something new. Yeah, because it's not a new camera, it's not a new television screen, it's not a new speaker boxes, it's a new thing, it's a new technology. The way we do it, we're the only one doing it. That's yeah. why we have this patent on it. Have you but done not... a live event yet? Yes, yeah, several. Roles, yeah. I should say a live music event yet, concerts. Uh, not necessarily concerts. I'm not. I'm not pretending to challenge the speaker boxes. When you go to a, a, a concert, you want to have this vibe with the speaker boxes and stuff like that. So. Not necessarily a music concert. Yeah. But what we did was for the private rooms. The balcony. And well, this rooms. is what I was thinking. Like, this is what I was thinking. Private rooms or in a stadium, the seats in the top 10 rows or whatever. Um, you know, just areas where the sound maybe isn't very good or. Yes, then yes, we did. But right. these were all proofs of concept. So yeah. I, I cannot name them already. Yeah. But for all the private balconies, the media room, the whatever. I guarantee you people listening are going to 
have some ideas on, on, oh my God, I really need like the ability to put out a second mix, you know? So like g- historically you, old people always com- complain about bass. It's too much bass okay. or not enough exactly. treble, not enough treble. Especially if you have a hear piece, a, you know, a hear pieces, devices that have been made for you, which are self employed yeah. because you're yeah. having issue. I mean, sub frequency. Yeah, they're very crazy. flat. Okay, let me give you this weird example. I went somewhere in the US for a specific boxing match, mm-hmm. asked by a specific broadcast, sports broadcaster in the US yeah. to do a demonstration during a certain period of time. Let me keep it as foggy as yeah, yeah. What we did was a proof of concept for this broadcaster, and it was giving me access to the a referee microphone and the falling from the ceiling microphone, right on top of the center of the ring, there's this kind of microphone falling from the sky, right? That is grabbing everything. He also gave me the commentators for uh, the, the, the one of the broadcasters. And I asked to have the red corner and blue corner microphone, okay? Mm-hmm. Obviously enough, when these guys, it was a heavyweight championship, yeah. when these guys were, were fighting, all those two microphones were quiet as hell. I mean, there's nothing there on the feed. So never mind, no one was on it. Yeah. But if you take the referee or the falling from the sky microphone, yeah. you feel the hit. You, yeah. hear, you hear everything. It's as close to the action as you can be. Yeah. So you don't want to be looking at your screen. You're looking at the ring and yeah. you can hear and feel the glove on the opponent's face. And then ding, they go back to their corner. Everybody was switching to the microphone of the of corner. Of course, And they were yeah. hearing what the coach was telling. Well, let me give you another example. So mm-hmm. I met a guy on a flight recently coming over from Europe. And uh, he started a company based on betting on the third down in football. This is American football okay. where we have four downs, right? So mm-hmm. um, you can bet basically, is it going to be a pass, a run? Uh, you know, what's going to happen on the third down? And you can bet just on the third down. He created this, this whole thing around third downs. He went to the NFL and he purchased the rights to the coach's microphone for third mm-hmm. down. What that call is straight into the quarterback's helmet from the coach. So he purchased it, but with a, I think it's a 10 second or 20 second delay yeah. so that they can't sell the play to the other team or something like that, or it gets somehow, you know, grabbed. And um, so right away, as soon as like within 10 or 20 seconds of making that bet, and then the play happens, you get that information straight from his company to yeah. that audience or whatever. Imagine being able to broadcast that inside the stadium. That would be really, well, really cool. Be careful with your example because the Australian market is a big betting market. Yeah. And we proved recently that we are 40 seconds faster than any app, betting app. Trends. Wow. So if That's you incredible. are inside of the venue, you got this edge where you can bet before everybody else from home. Huh. Yeah. But can you delay it? I can, if I, if, you know, the audio signal itself can be delayed if yeah. you want to. Yeah. No, but that's what I'm saying. Like if, for example, you could go to a, a, uh, a hockey, uh, arena and whenever there's a timeout, you could listen to the timeout 10 seconds Absolutely. after it happened or 20 seconds Absolutely. after it happened or whatever. And everyone could listen to that in their headphones in the audience and hear what was said during the timeout, for example. And at the end of the game, when everybody's rushing out, you look up to the Jumbotron and you can see the star player to an interview. You can listen to it. Or what about, what about in the penalty box? If the guy, course, if there's, not? if they put a microphone in the penalty box and they tell all the teams, Hey, there's a microphone in the penalty box, say whatever you feel like saying. And yeah. they can sit there and bitch for the whole two minutes about the call that just happened. This guy's an asshole, this coach or this ref. Okay. And, you know what I mean? So if you pay your ticket to be seated right next to that penalty box, yeah. you'll be hearing everything, even the F word. Yeah, yeah, you know, of course. You're going to yeah. be hearing everything. Yeah. But if you are from home, there's no way that the broadcaster will exactly. allow this language to go out. But yeah. hey, you were in the venue. Why not? Yeah. You, you will be hearing it. Yeah, no, that's what I'm saying. That would be a really fun use of your technology would be the penalty box. We are box. not cloud. We can yeah. do it. Yeah. If the, if the microphone feed owner allow us, we're yeah. going to be streaming it. Yeah. So 
going back to AI for a second, because you know I'm, yeah, okay, I'm an AI ahead. nerd. No problem. Do you have any examples? Like in our industry, most people mm-hmm. who think about AI think of it as as a as the devil. You know, it's it's AI is going to come and and program the MA3 console, and I'm going to lose my job. And my opinion is that that's not going to happen. What AI is going to do is it's going to support you. If you're the lighting director or yeah, a lighting absolutely. programmer, yeah. you won't have to sit and program all the, the, the basic stuff. You can have AI do that for you. Just like macros are built into consoles now. They didn't used to be. Um, yeah, we are using it. I can give you an example if you want to. Yeah, please. Okay, so, well, first of all, I'm a French-Canadian guy, so whenever I'm writing emails to really, you know, first approach, new, important people, whatever, sometimes I ask uh, ChatGPT or a writer to just help me out with my grammar. I'm ah. like, oh, crap, okay, this is too French. You know, I, sometimes I'm doing jokes at the restaurant, and it's like, no one's laughing. <laughs> and a colleague of mine is like, well, that's not how you should say yeah. it in English. Yeah, yeah. Oh, crap. It's yeah. too, it's Those are too good examples, simple. yeah. So grammars for email, that's one of the main thing I'm using it. Yeah. Uh, we both write on many, many pictures. Uh, to explain what Devox is about, we are doing a lot of post and LinkedIn post and uh, uh, documentation, paperwork, yeah. presentation, yeah. stuff like that. And we were out of pictures yeah. of people wearing headphones yeah so i mean we want to have a woman wearing headphones we want to have a full crowd wearing headphones we could have i use it pictures. for that stuff too yeah exactly yeah so i, use what, it so my or I need a picture guy, of, of six moving lights and four speakers on a stage boom exactly <laughs> you've got it and, and it, 10 in seconds. this circumstances yeah okay it was not super relevant for us to have a real picture if and if it looks a little ai generated yeah never mind it's explaining my point yeah it's just to cover up my text yeah to have this picture on no i get it it makes perfect sense and so there's so, really yeah, so good examples it? of uses of it where it's not replacing you like you know even from a coding standpoint, like we just talked about, like I'm well, sure there's really well. boring code. Do you know Richard Kadena? Nope. Sorry. Richard Kadena is a very smart guy. He worked for high-end systems for a, a number of years, okay. but now he goes around doing training for um, f- mo- mostly uh, electrical for our industry, for you know, mm-hmm. uh, for the events industry, theater, live events, etc. Very, very smart guy, but. You know, he said that, um, like, in a lot of the things that he creates, he needs to create, um, uh, you know, some very, very simple basic lines of code. And those Mm -hmm. basic lines of code sometimes take him five or six hours to do. And it's for a very, very simple task. And he now uses... uh, uh, you know, he now uses AI and it's done in 10 minutes and he gets his time back to do other things. Yeah, so. my guys are sometimes relying on um, the um, the AI for coding in specific blocks whenever it needs to be simplified. Yeah. Okay. Or else, you know how coding works, okay? Yeah. I'm not a coder myself, but you can get lost into your screen. If you're typing in line of commands for hours and hours, you're getting blurry face, just like, ugh. Yeah, and it's not working. You don't know why. Sometimes it's like, "Hey, where's my mistake? Copy paste." Hey, why do you have this double line over there? It's you've been struggling for yeah. hours, and this freaking AI yeah. got it right like yeah. in ten seconds. Yeah, for so research. For research. Well, no, and it, if you think, uh, you know, getting outside our industry, you think of things like cancer and and Alzheimer's, yeah. and you know, things that have been. We've spent billions of dollars and many, many tens of years on it, and we still don't have solutions. Mm-hmm. I think AI is going to really speed that kind of stuff up, and I'm excited it, we're about that. We're using it carefully. Yeah. Uh, it, even at IC Evans and or at Devox, we're using it carefully. Yeah. And it's never doing 100% of the job, never. No, I agree so, with so you. We're not even close. Yeah. So, so, so you know, even, even the grammar I was referring to, sometimes it's way too neat. I'm like, I don't even understand what it is. You know, it's like, that's yeah. not what I meant. I'll, I'll I ex- assume that. <laughs> I'll explain a real world one to you that we're currently working on. Uh, it's not a secret, really. But um, freight 
quoting in our business because we're a marketplace mm-hmm. is mm-hmm. is a very mm-hmm. complicated task because mm-hmm. somebody goes on an e-commerce site they want to buy something putting in put it in a shopping cart how much is it including shipping and taxes and everything okay boom purchase and when you're dealing with used live event equipment it's mm-hmm. almost impossible to do this because it's right. not a known you know, you don't know the dimensions of a device because is it shipping in a road case? Is it one device? Is it four devices? Are they shipping in dual road cases, quad road cases? Are they on a pallet? Uh, Mm -hmm. Everything is custom pretty much. Um, The cool thing, there's some new AI tech out there that you can basically put, have an image of something Mm -hmm. and based on what is around that image, it will give you the weight and dimensions of the image. And yeah, so, true. you know, AI would know that this is an iPod case. Um, so it would just give me dimensions and weight of an iPod uh, case or AirPod case, sorry. And, but, you know, if you put uh, a picture of a guitar and you want the weight and dimensions of the guitar, it's going to look at things around that guitar and it's going to go, okay, that's a man. He's probably about six feet tall. He probably weighs about 180 pounds. Uh, the guitar is going to be three and a half feet tall and it's going to weigh X. And yeah. so, you know, that's a technology that we're working with an AI company out of Europe right now on creating a, an estimating system for freight where it can look at a bunch of moving lights in road cases and estimate freight uh, or estimate weight and dimensions close enough to where we can get an accurate freight quote instantly without having to cause anybody any delays or waiting. Wow, or it's a powerful tool. Very powerful. So things like that you can't do, you know, without it. Like it's things that AI can do that other things can't it's do. Too, it's too time consuming for a correct. simple task. Yeah, correct. So yeah, that's where right, I get right, excited yeah. about AI, you know. And plus, the older I get and the busier I get, the lazier I get. I don't want to be doing simple mundane things, and AI is really good no, at that I'm kind just, of stuff. I love AI too. I'm just cautious. You know, I that's, agree with that's you. it. Yeah, I agree with because you. Because right now you have you try to log into your bank account and you get this two factor authentication all the time. You don't have your cell phone in your hand and you don't have this text to code or whatever yeah. it is. So just yeah. wait for the AI to crack this up. We're gonna have ten layers of security. So yeah. it's just like okay, just use with well, that's my <laughs> this is also another area that AI scares the hell out of me is is uh breaching security systems. You know, yeah. there's AI because already you've got hackers out there who figure out ways into things quite quickly and they hack your bank account or they, you know, steal your identity or whatever they do. AI is going to be able to do that much faster and at a much have... higher level. Uh, oh, right. That's true. No, a much higher level. AI yeah, is going to become a very yeah. efficient thief. Yeah. But <laughs> you, you know? have to ask the right thing to the AI as well to make it. That's that's it properly that's the whole story so you story. take an example where you get this brand new wi-fi equipment brand new out of the box i mean nothing is configured you plug everything you know plug it and like configure all this shit enter yeah no way it's not gonna happen yeah. i mean you yeah. need to be an, an, an engineer just yeah. to ask the right thing yeah. so that's where i'm thinking about bridging that huge gap is soon yeah no, no. <laughs> but I think there's a lot of things that it does really well right now that can be helpful yeah, yeah, for yeah, people. Yeah. So just yeah, to yeah. ignore it or to like, you know, it's funny because I went to a lighting designer, very good friend of mine a few weeks ago. And I said, hey, we were just having a conversation and I said, mm-hmm. well, why don't you use AI? He said, I haven't got time to figure that shit out. And mm-hmm. I said, do me a favor, go to this website and do this. Just tell it, give it a prompt that says, I need an image that does blah, blah, blah. And he did it. And he came back to me and he goes, holy shit, my world just changed. And next thing you know, so <laughs> yeah. he has little pug dogs and, and he's really into guns, typical American, right? But he's really into okay. guns. And so next thing you know, he's posting on Instagram pictures of like his two pugs carrying machine guns on, yeah, on spaceships <laughs> and stuff or riding on the backs of sharks with machine guns and stuff, right? And I was just laughing and he goes, it's your fault. You made me waste an entire day on this shit. And I said, no, I didn't tell you to do that. But yeah, so there's, there's some fun things. I mean, music. Oh, yeah. Music is, uh, in, music is great too. Yeah, I, yeah. Now, if I'm a yeah. music, uh, you know, if I'm an author, a publisher, all of those things, mm-hmm. I'm very worried because it's, it's insane how good some of the music creation stuff is right now. It's like... Mm-hmm. 
you know, like know. ED, yeah, EDM, yeah. you can, you can basically create music real time with these apps, mm -hmm. like DJs, they've got already DJ apps for AI mm -hmm. where you can tell it what you want your set to be doing and when you want it to change and get a little more upbeat or whatever. And it just creates it and it's all original music. Well, also these apps that are in the market already, such as Spotify that I have integrated AI yeah. and are, are suggesting songs that I do really like because yeah. I didn't know the artist at all and yeah. just discover plenty of music. That's cool. Well, because you're in, Some, you're in Montreal, all you listen to is Celine Dion and yeah, Michael all the Bublé, time, all the time. right? Michael Bublé all the time. and C Celine Dion. That's it. Is there something else? <laughs> so that's, that, that's a good example though because yeah. sometimes the difference with spotify and a cd or you know the old generation music mm -hmm. was i was picking and choosing what i wanted to yeah. listen to now with spotify sometimes i'm facing a blank page okay what i would like to listen and i don't i don't know what i would like to listen but i want to listen to music right so sometimes i just click on smart smart dj and it's suggesting me something that i didn't know is like wow I just discovered this new band from Australia recently. Yeah. I was like, "Well, that's great." I know it's amazing. <laughs> well, that's, no, that's I really do cool. the same thing. Like I've, I'm all Apple. So for me, I've had Apple Music and iTunes well, forever. Same, yeah, yeah, same. And so Apple, I never select anything. I always just click the red button that says Marcel's favorites. Boom. Okay. And I'm like, how does it know? Like I like all these songs. It's so good. <laughs> you know, it's uh, it's fantastic. Well, yeah, Sebastian, I, cool. I, I really enjoyed this talk. I love your tech. I'm, I'm very excited for you and for Devox and where it's going. Uh, Thanks. It I'm, was really cool. I'm going to really pay attention and, and follow it uh, because I think uh, I'm going to see, you know, Devox system installed here, Devox system installed here because it yeah. makes a lot of sense. It's so, so easily integrated into an existing environment yeah. as well as a new environment. Yeah. It's I'm simple, excited so. for you. I'm excited for I you. just want to I wish I had know, lots of money because I would just invest in your company today. Yeah, you should. You should. Yeah, you should. <laughs> yeah. Really you should. <laughs> yeah. That's fine. I'm optimistic too. <laughs> uh just you can you can have a look at devox.com. Not saying more. That's Perfect. our webpage. So devox.com is gonna give you plenty of uh, other things. Excellent. You. Thank you so much. Thanks for your time. It was really cool.